Hi dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, here is the second part of the, our Bible study on the, um, answering the question about, rather, the, about strength, flesh. Now we are trying to understand what the marriage institution is. So, now we read uh, from Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 that the Lord God established uh, a, a mutual a relationship between woman and a man, a man and a woman. So, God created the uh, woman out of the uh, man uh, 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 body and then he uh, just uh, gave him as a wife. So, that's the relationship that God established. This is the marriage relationship. So, what is an institution marriage? How, if it is so, how is it? I mean, is it... How it could, I mean, how was it going to be handled? How men and women should handle them, uh, their relationship? Is it casual? Is it just, as uh, the world did, or what? Do or what? How do we have to handle the, uh, the our relationship, uh, the marriage relationship, the, the husband and wife? How do they behave before God? so that they have a fruitful marriage and a good marriage, a long-lasting marriage, and God-honoring marriage. How is it? I mean, what is it? Now, let me read uh, from other part of the uh, book of Hebrew, chapter uh, uh, 13, verse 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but the whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Now, this is a relationship. And God uh, instituted the marriage between a man and a woman, and he says, this is one, should be fruitful, two, it should increase, multiply, third, it should be undefiled, honorable, Marriage is honorable, and the bed is undefiled. It is a place of holiness, sanctify, sanct sanctification, a place of sanctification. Marriage is, by itself, a place of sanctification before God, a place of holiness. There is nothing dirty in it. So, God expects that the marriage to be honorable, the marriage to be undefiled, the bed to be undefiled. But, the whoremongers and the adulterers will judge, God will judge them. So, if people are away from the marriage, if they break this fundamental principle of God, and they will, they will meet the judgment of God, the fairy indignation of the Lord God. God is going to throw them to everlasting fire because they don't listen to the word of God and they didn't, they don't respect His law and they didn't abide by the law of God. So they will, they will be found guilty and will be thrown into everlasting fire. So God is going to judge. It is honorable and it is holy. It is holy. Okay. Now, now, what kind of how is the man to the towards the woman? I mean, how how can the man handle his relationship to a woman? Now, the Bible says, "Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it." Ephesians chapter five. 25. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives. Now, this is a, a you know, God put them together, and then the, God gave the commandment to the man to love his wife. What kind of love? Well, the English word is the same word, love is love. But it, when you go to the Greek, uh, it has, um, it's, it's powerful. It's not any kind of love. You know, philo, and there are so many kinds of loves in, 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 in 
the word to express love, there are so many words in, in the Greek language. But this one is the highest love that man has for his wives. wife. I'm sorry to say, uh, for his wife. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So what? Christ came and died for the church. Was the church good? With the, where, where, was there any believer for in Christ? Were, were there people who, was, uh, were, who were obeying the commandment of God when Christ came? No! Everybody was a rebellion. And then Jesus Christ has to teach them, has to preach the word, and has to bring the word, and the, uh, the prophets, uh, the apostles have to uh, preach the word of God so that inform humanity about the love of God, and then we become the children of God. We love Jesus because God first loved us. It's not us, we loved him first. But where, when we were enemy, Christ died for us. When we were enemies, Christ died for us. So Christ loved G Christ, the, the church in this fashion and he gave his life for the church. So husbands should love in this, their wives in this fashion. Now let's even 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 stronger is when we see the uh, the word which um, God used here to um, to um, uh, God commanded men to love their husbands or Andres husbands agapete tasgunaikas iafton. Katos kai ha Christos hegapesen ten ecclesian ke a eafton paradokon oper aftes aftes he gave his life so what kind of love agape love agape love is the highest love which God loved humanity which the love of God for humanity, God had has for human beings. Well, where human beings, what kind of love? Agape love is the sacrificial love. One, God sacrificed his his life. Jesus sacrificed his life. Uh, 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 to save us and then John 3 16 we can read that um, the love of God to humanity Otas God Hegapesen has us Hegapesen Agape Otas God Hegapesen has us that's the love of God it's not philo it's not some kind of love but this is the highest love the highest love. So, a man should love his wife without no condition. Unconditional love. Even if she is sick, even if she has so many, so many, many things, defects, he has to love her as God loved us, as Jesus Christ loved us and gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary. That is the love of God. So, man should love woman, his woman, his wife, as God loved the world. Agape love. God will, will study about the word love in Greek, uh, in the Bible. There are so many. In uh, I studied last time in different parts of the Bible. But it, this love is agape love. Utas gar hegapesen hata as. Utas gar hegapesen agape hata as. God. God loved us in this fashion. This is the highest love, the supreme love, 
the sacrificial love. Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for us sinners, evil people. He loved us. This is the love of God. So, the, in the marriage institution, there is a bondage, the highest love in the marriage institution, from the side of the man. From the side of the man. I didn't see that the woman should love the uh, husband with agape love, but there's a different love. A different love, God says. It's not as high as this one. It's not the highest the sacrificial love. But, but, men should love their lives. Should, men should love their wives with the love that Christ loved the church and died for the church, sacrificed his life for the church. This is a relationship. Okay. Okay. This is it. This is it. This is a marriage relationship. Um... Now, husbands love your wives and be not bitter, ag bitter against them. Husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. That is Colossians 3, 18 and 19. Verses 18 and 19, Colossians 3. Husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. No should not be bitter to your wife. You have to respect her. You have to love her. And you have to have the highest love for your wife. Not for your game. Not for anything. The first love is the love of God and next the love of your wife. That's what the commandment of God is. But men just do all kind of things. Let me read it in the Greek. Oi Andres Agapete tas kunaikas. Agapete tas gunaikas. Your wives. Love with agape love. Love your wife with agape love. With a sacrificial love. With a sacrificial love. That's what God commanded. The highest love a man has to the woman. Okay. What about the woman? What's the woman? I mean, what did he say in the marriage relationship? What are the women supposed to do? Okay. Let's go to the book of Tita, Titus. Titus 2, 4. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 4. That they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, and to love their children. To love their husbands and to love their children. Now, as I said, the most important thing in marriage is the children. The multiplication, the reproduction, the increasing. That's what God expects from two uh, entities. A woman and a, a husband and uh, a wife. A woman and a woman, a man. He expects them to have the children and to love their children the woman to take care of their children. That's, uh, you know, that God demanded. God demanded this. That they may teach the young woman to sober, to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now, let's see the, 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 the Greek word. What kind of love is this? And now, uh, uh, okay, uh, Tas neas philandros philandros enai phil technos phil philo technos you see both of them are philos philo is another love is a lost uh, not the lord a mid middle middle kind of love is not the highest love is lesser value like philadelphia philadelphia adelphas brothers Philadelphia is a brotherly love, a fellowship, brotherly love, how a brother loves his brother. It's not like agape. It's not like agape. 
But this one is, you know, philandros, philandros, love their husbands with a philo love, not agape. They can love, but this one is, now this is a, the, the foundation God established, that may, women should love, love their husbands. But the, the love a man has for his wife is unconditional. That's unconditional. It's the word of God. Men abused it. Men did all kind of things against their uh, wives. They have been abusing them because they don't know the word of God. But the word of God is firm. Is firm. That men should love their wives with the highest degree of love. And then the obedience comes from the woman. They should obey their husbands. They should love with phil, uh, philandros and and then philtechnos. They should love their children too. Philotechnos. Philotechnos. Philandros. That's the love that women should have for their uh, Um, for their husbands. Now this is the constitution of marriage, the institution of marriage which God established. And these are this and others are the basic fundamental law God established. God gave to humanity to uh, be uh, to be obeyed or to uh, uh, listen and to abide by it. But human beings they didn't keep it. There are children of God who kept it, but most of the human being didn't uh, pass the exam. They didn't. Now, now let's 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 continue and then uh, find out what is the strand flesh means. Strand flesh. First, let me go to uh, the book of uh, 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 Matthew. I think, yeah, it is. Uh, And the Pharisees is uh, is uh, in the book of Matthew. Uh, another part we find this. I'm gonna read it. Uh, um, praise God. Uh, Matthew 19 verse 3. Matthew 19 verse 3. The Pharisees, the Pharisees, those people, the religious people. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting, uh, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man live after, uh, live father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twin shall be one flesh the twin shall be one flesh that is the right flesh one flesh that is the right flesh with the Lord God established a woman and a man coming together and becoming one flesh this is the fundamental law of God the marriage law of God. A man and a woman come together and they be one flesh. One helper and the other helping each other. Ezer Kenegdo. Kenegdo. Opposite and helping. Opposite force so that it has the opposite force that it can help you uh, to stand up. To stand. So God did that one. What did Jesus say? No, they cannot. <laughs> Divorce their, their wives for any reason. No, God didn't do that. He created them in the fashion that they become one flesh and then they join forever with the highest love in the marriage. It's not nagging wife and nagging husband. No. 
with the perfect love, with the perfect harmony, with the perfect relation which is established by God, marriage is stronger and stronger and healthier. That's what God established. They cannot divorce, he told them. Okay, let's continue re reading uh, Matthew 9 uh, 19. Uh, you can read for yourself. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twin. No, they are not two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined to together, let no man put asunder. That is the right flesh. They are one flesh, that's the healthy flesh, and they come together, that's they are one flesh. It's not a strange flesh. There is nothing bad in this flesh and this relationship. Any relationship apart from this is a strange flesh. A man and a man, strange flesh. A woman and a woman, a strange flesh. A man and an animal, a strange flesh. A man and a woman and animal or whatever is a strange flesh. Strange. Because from the establishment, God created in this fashion that human beings should marry, uh, should uh, join to each other in marriage, in marriage, in marriage. That's what, from the foundation, God is uh, uh, telling us. Um, uh, Genesis chapter 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And there shall be one flesh. What the, Jesus is uh, just, you know, uh, telling about this. So the relationship is a woman and a man, and in, 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 uh, in the spirit of marriage, and they become one, uh, unified under the law of God, and they are one flesh. And anything apart from this is a strange flesh. That is what is homosexuality is. Now let's go and then uh, fr uh, let, let's finish uh, uh, this, what it is saying. Now, and the strange flesh. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, uncleanness, spiritual uncleanness, spiritually dirty, spiritually wickedness, against the commandment of God, against the law of God, breaking all laws, all rules of God, and coming under the, the, the fiery indignation of the judgment of God. So, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange fleshes. What does it say, strange fleshes? Man and man, woman and woman, the self, strange. Because God established between the, the a single flesh is between man and a woman in the unification under marriage. That is it. Apart from this is a strange flesh, wickedness, evil. That's, so this language is about homosexuality. And then also any kind of, any kind of relationship which is not based on marriage. Fornication. Now, let me go to uh, the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter, um, chapter 1. Chapter 1. And then uh, I'll be done soon. Now, um... Um, now, uh, Romans uh, chapter 1, you can read it, a whole lot of uh, things about it. For this cause, God gave, the, God gave them up vile affection, that's fornication. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. The woman against nature, married women. The man, against nature, which God created, married men. So God gave them up for wickedness, because they don't obey His law. They didn't listen to the word of God. 
If you don't listen it, you will be under this indignation of God. God will give you up for destruction. You know, you, we have to pray before God. We have to handle our marriage to the highest degree. We have to be careful about it. We have to think about it and reconsider our relationship so that we abide by the commandment of God, by the law of God. Otherwise, it is dangerous. So, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemingly <laughs> and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was met. Yes, that's that. That's what God is telling us. So, a strange flesh. A strange flesh is a relationship which is not based on the unification. A union of man and a woman, a man and a woman, under uh, the, the, the uh, constitution of marriage, which is the Bible. And then all which I mentioned and others should be, you know, respected, should be kept in the marriage to be a, to have a successful and God glorifying marriage. God glorifying relationship, a blessed relationship. So homosexuality is an other impure relationship between women and men and whatsoever. It is a sin and God will judge. God will judge. It's not me. It's not me. The problem is the churches nowadays they try to to hell is homosexual. To hell that! No, we are not. We are not to, 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 to judge anyone. We tell them it is not biblical. It's not God glorifying. It causes, it brings the judgment of God on you. And you have to, and then if you say, okay, go ahead. I'm not against it. God is against it. We cannot change it. And we don't have to even fight for it. Just tell people and pray for them. They have their choice. God gave them the choice. So who is going to be against them? No. We tell them, we pray for them. That's what we can do. Not further than that. We, we love them. We care for them. They are human beings. And we pray for them. We pray for them. And tell them that, this is against the law of God. God is going to judge. God is going to condemn them for that reason. That's what we can do. Uh, thank you very much for listening for the word of God. If you have any other question, you can ask. And um, it's really great uh, to study the word of God with you. Have a blessed time and God be with you. Amen.